Gracefully and Frankly is brought to you by Sierra Sill. If you've been in oh, London Drugs or looking for natural anti-inflammatories online, you've seen these big green, blue, and cumin-colored labels. Inside are capsules that offer a money-back guarantee that you'll feel a difference in your pain or your money back. I don't know anybody else who does that. They've worked in my family for years even for elderly pets. So why are you suffering joint pain? Go to the website, sierrasill.com. Sierra, like the mountains, S-I-L.com. Get 10% off your order by using the code GF. Welcome to episode 82 of Gracefully and Frankly, and oh boy, are we ever going to get frank this week. I'm Erin Davis. <laughs> I'm Lisa Brandt, and coming up, we're going to recap what's happening on our Facebook Live on August the 8th, 8 o'clock Eastern, and 10 of you will win a beautiful heart pendant. We'll win one for your friend as well. Have all the details coming up. You bet, and you'll find it all at our Gracefully and Frankly Facebook page, so don't forget to check that out. Okay, we're going to get into the ick zone here because Lisa has some actual scientific proof of why vibrators are good for you. Okay, we'll keep it clean. <laughs> Nobody's going to have a hot flash just listening to this. It's just some, some science, and we're all about science, right? That's right. And we lost some people this week who are about science, I guess you could say. Richard Simmons, yep. the science of keeping yourself fit and getting slim. Dr. Ruth, who would very much support the vibrator. Yes, she would. I'm sorry. That sounds more like one of the guys from <laughs> Hogan's Heroes. And a few others. So it's been a really busy week for news, <sighs> entertainment news, and all that kind of thing. Oh, has it ever. And we'll take it on. And what's shaking at home? Well, nothing in the home sale, but so much around Vancouver Island. We'll look into that and the cognitive dissonance it takes even just to live here. Huh. Oh, I'm going to another island. Yes, and you're taking your Envy pillow with you? Of course, there's not a lot of room in the <laughs> mini, as you well know, Miss Lisa. Yes. But I will be taking along my Envy pillow because you make it fit. That's right. And my friend Paul was telling me as well that he took his Envy pillow that he bought after hearing us talk about on Gracefully and Frankly and loves it, has no more neck pain. Yay! And he took his to a guy's weekend and put up with teasing from the other guys until mm -hmm. he showed it to them. What it's all about and why it was worth him bringing it. And they didn't think it was so funny anymore. Whoa. You know what guys are like when they're all together. Oh, sure. Are we going to have a pillow fight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he won them over, and it's working for him, and I think it'll work for you, too. Especially, Paul has the same thing I do, and that's neck pain. Or, I should say, he doesn't anymore. Yeah, this reminds me of the line from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> Paul should have gone to that get-together, pointed at what they were sleeping on, and said, Those aren't pillows. Ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's right, but these sure are, and there's so much more to discover at Envy, E-N-V-Y, pillow.com. Use the code GF for 10% off. I can hardly keep up with your movements and motion. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. I'm leaving this in, you know. I'm leaving this in, you know. Okay, where are you off to this week, my friend? Well, it's so funny, you know, our 98-year-old friend Mira, who you will be seeing in August, of course, yep. because she's just like, to me, this icon, and everybody who knows me should come and meet Mira, because she is a miracle. But anyway, she said, last week she was kind of like, okay, let me get this straight, you're leaving a castle to go to a cabin. And I said, yeah, that's just kind of what Canadians do, Mira. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> So you're leaving the condo mm -hmm. to go to a cabin. Yes, leaving one island to go to another island. Hmm. And I think the longer we live here, the more islands we are expected to explore. I've been to Salt Spring Island, and you have too. That's where we encountered the great wolf spider in yes. our cabin. Yes. <laughs> you will not soon forget that. We had towels wrapped up under her door and everything so that that <laughs> thing wouldn't find its way into bed with you oh and cuddle goodness. you with all its eight arms. <laughs> and I slept like a sarcophagus. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, you did. I had to tuck her in, <laughs> but literally. 
I had a massage, and then I wander up to the cottage, and there the doors are open, and there's staffers there, and the couch is upside down, and I'm going, oh, great, Lisa's drinking. and <laughs> But no! So which island are you going to this time? This time it's Maine Island, M-A-Y-N-E. Hmm. We've been to Pender, but Maine is third. And it's so funny because our street, our house, is just a turn off a road called Main View. And so you're looking straight at it. Oh. But we've never been there. And after this week, Rob won't have been there yet. But I'm going by myself from one island to another, island hopping in perhaps the most sedate way possible. Okay, so what do you expect to get out of it? What is it you're looking for for this week? Mm. I want to not look at chaos around me. Uh I want to not look at the condo being upside down and not really moved into. I want to be alone. Right. And I know that that sounds, uh uh-oh, call the marriage counselor. No. Uh, Call the midwife. No, it's just I think we're kind of tired of each other, and that hasn't happened a lot in our 30-odd years. But it just comes a time when... I need to go away on my own. And, you know, when I travel solo, Rob gets so much done at home. It's like he digs in and goes for 12 hours straight. This time he's got shelves all cut that are going to go into the condo cupboard so we can move more mugs in. You know my mug problem. <laughs> and <laughs> and make the place more homey so that I will feel like moving in. Because right now, emotionally, I'm just so stuck. I don't want to leave our house We have to leave our house for emotional reasons. I'm just, so that's in a nutshell what I'm looking for. It's funny, whenever I hear about a couple who, you know, they were married 63 years and never spent a night apart, I think, ooh, ooh, codependent, because I think you need time on your own. I do to develop and listen to yourself as a human being. And Derek and I do the same thing in different ways, but we also need our alone time. And I know a lot of couples that do. Either they go on vacations with other people or they just spend time on their own. And I think it's extremely healthy. So yay you. And absence does make the heart grow fonder. You take each other for granted after a certain amount of time especially when you're neither of you are in the best mood. We've both been dealing with waves of depression over the grandkids moving away. Yeah. And, and of course, the place of not knowing about the house. I mean, we may have an offer coming, and <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried about, well, what can I worry about, right, Lisa? Worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair and hoping it'll get you across the road. It just does no good at all. So I'm going to sit in a different kind of chair. Easier said than done. It's the ideal. But True. But we're all trying to work toward it. So you'll sit in like, a, what do they call them out there? Do they call them Muskoka chairs or do they call them Canadian tire chairs? I don't know. What do they call them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You can tell where someone's from by what they call those big slatted outdoor chairs. Like, is it a Muskoka chair? Is it an Adirondack chair. That's the word. Yeah. Well, here it could be a Pacific Northwest chair. Mm. As long as the chair I'm in is not shaking, no matter what island I'm on, I'll be happy. What's the deal? Well, if you look at the mainland and Vancouver Island is a sliver that goes along the mainland right off the bottom of Canada, and we're we're so close to the United States. As you know, we look out the window at the U.S. I can see Putin from my house, <laughs> but I can't, which is good. So we're on the island at the basic southern tip where the swarm of earthquakes, that's what they call a whole bunch of them is a swarm. Really? I thought it was going to be an oh, shit. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's where the swarm was. And one of them was a 6.0, which is not insignificant. Right. Even my aunt and uncle who used to live here and now live near Calgary, they messaged and said, hey, how you doing? Well, we're doing fine. And I did some deep diving into this, and it is the stuff that nightmares are made of. So I'll try and do this in my own cockeyed kind of way and tell you that our area, the Pacific Northwest from Northern California up through Oregon, Washington State, and they mention specifically Vancouver Island, we are due for an 8.7 to a 9.2. We're due. We're overdue. Wow. There is this tectonic shift going on in the Cascadias, and the Cascadia Mountains are the ones that we look at, and there's a Cascadian fault. That's what it's called. So here are the odds. You know I like to gamble. There's a one in three chance 
it's coming in the next 50 years, and then a 1 in 10 chance it's going to be over 9. So, <laughs> yeah, they weren't able to figure out what has happened in the past until the science kind of caught up. And the last one that hit was in 1700. It was just enormous. So where we were living yeah. up in Dean Park, which is a mountain known in the indigenous language as place of refuge, I think that was because of a tsunami. Get this. For about four to five minutes, this is how long this earthquake would take at this magnitude. For four minutes, your fridge will dance across the room and down the hall. That is how big it's going to be. Wow. And then it'll be quiet for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's how much time you have to get to higher ground. And you've seen how fast Rob moves. It's not going to happen. And I can't leave him or the dogs behind. <laughs> not if he's not on skates. I mean, no. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No. And it's uphill. So we've seen what tsunamis can do, of course, and what, yep. what earthquakes can the devastation. You know what this is reminding me of? When we both worked at... Uh, Rogers radio stations in Toronto. And I, I don't know if CHFI did as much as 680 did in pandemic preparation, mm. but we did tons of pandemic preparation. And then it was all quiet for several years. Yeah. And next thing you know, boom, here it comes. So you listen to the science, you prepare for it, you do whatever. And then when it doesn't happen, everybody kind of gets a little bit, you know, like, oh, that was overblown. There's not that much going on. And I hope that doesn't happen with this. See, here we're talking human nature on so many levels. Yeah. The people who live in Florida and are surprised every year with hurricane season. Uh, the people who live along the San Andreas Fault. You know, the big one in Oakland was not anywhere near what this one's going to be. Not to say that it wasn't huge, but it's, it's human nature, Lisa. First off, we put it out of sight, out of mind. Cognitive dissonance. Yeah. We know that it's bound to happen. But, hey, it's not going to happen to us, right? That's why people choose to live in what we call paradise and disregard the enormous threat. Oh, are you still coming to visit in August now that I've told you all this? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not going to happen then. Nothing like that happens to me. It's all good. Right. We can still prepare the guest room up at the house. It hasn't sold yet. So we'll make sure that... Hey, if something's happening, I'm sticking with you guys. Rob's got to find us both food. Oh, foraging. He's good at that. We've got kibble okay. somewhere. So why are we here? Well, all you have to do is look at all the lists of Vancouver Island being the prettiest island in Canada, which it just ranked a few weeks ago, beating out Cape mm. Breton. Take that, Cape Breton. We love yeah. Cape Breton. But, you know, it's just, it's a gorgeous place to live. And you kind of put that out of your mind. We could move to Saskatchewan or Alberta, but we choose here. It's just craziness when you know the facts and you know that there is a swarm of earthquakes that have just happened. You go, phew, glad that's over. Well, no. But you make a great point. Why do people still live in Florida? Why do people still live in New Orleans? Why, you know, yeah. when when there are these risks, why don't people move? Because they love it, because it's home, because it's pretty, because 364.8 days of the year, it's perfect, you know? Yeah. I do get it. I, I understand why you live there. And every time I come out, I understand it even more. It's It's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, it is, as we say, the price that we pay, and you know that half of our home insurance is earthquake insurance. I kind of wish I'd put on a big heap and help on the depends before we started this, because <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit shaken in the old boots from this discussion right now. I'm a little concerned, so mm. not for me. Ah. And I don't even know if I'm worried for you necessarily, but 50 years is a long time. Yeah, it is. Hey, we are living in such unprecedented times right now. Mm -hmm. Everything is shaking us in our boots. Yeah, somebody takes a shot at the former president of the United States. Who saw that coming? Uh, okay, if you want to say a lot of people saw it coming because people will make flip comments about shooting a politician they don't like or seeing them shot or something. But in reality, yeah. in actual fact, who really thought that somebody was going to do it? Unprecedented times. Yeah. Yeah. 
thoughts going out, of course, to the firefighter whose life was oh. lost in front of his whole family there at that event in Butler, Pennsylvania. But the whole thing reminds you of, oh, my gosh, you remember when it used to take years for an Oliver Stone movie to come out and stir up all the controversy and the conspiracy theories and give a voice to what people in their basements had been saying for years? Well, in this case... There is no need for a Zapruder film. Mm. Abraham Zapruder was everybody with a cell phone right. on Saturday. Right. They all saw the shooter get killed. They all oh. saw everything. Yeah. And then, of course, people weighing in with their opinion on the candidate and who was behind it and deep state and all the stupid, stupid conspiracy theories that come out, the facts that aren't fact. Yeah. This is a time when... The Internet is exactly what we should not be on because you have to sit back and wait for the truth. But then the question is, Lisa, who's going to accept the truth anymore anyway? Well, I looked at a couple of comments shortly after it happened, and that was enough for me. Uh, one person who didn't even know anything about it just wrote, staged. And that was it. I was out. I don't have time to put that garbage in my head. You have your news sources, wait for them to tell you what has happened. And people were dummying up CNN headlines and just, you know, mm. any lunatic out there with Photoshop or Microsoft Paint <laughs> can do whatever they want. Yeah, you and I could do it. Of course. Jeez. Of course. And yeah. I don't have any room in my head for that. <sighs> you know, all those stupid people before the Internet would just be stupid on their own. Yep. And now we have to look at them. They're out there with us and they have a voice, a mm. voice as loud as anybody else's almost. Yeah. There were some other stories in the past week. It was, in its way, a small tremor of news, especially for Gen Xers, for people that we and those who came after us grew up with. First, some happy news for Alec Baldwin. The charges against him were dropped in the shooting on the set of Rust, and they never should have been filed anyway. Absolutely, they never should have been filed. That armorer had total responsibility for putting live bullets in those guns. It was just astounding to me that it made it that far. So good for Alec Baldwin. To see him cry with relief was just mm -hmm. quite a moment. Yeah, and the fact that he was a target of political, you hear political witch hunt, but honestly, because he had gone after Trump week after week on Saturday Night Live, he became a very real target in this. And so he got off. And then there was the deaths of people that we knew. The actress Shelley Duvall, known from The Shining and as Olive Oil, she died at 75. Yeah. Shannon Doherty, on Sunday we learned that she had died at 53. Were you a fan of 90210? Never watched it. However, you know, she's one of those people I only knew of because she was famous. Right. So I knew about all the fights and the, you know, the gossipy stuff. But to have battled breast cancer for nine years and to be stage four for six or seven years, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. 53 is just, just a sad, sad age to go for anybody. It is. There are pictures of her and Luke Perry. Are they reunited at the Peach Pit? And those who know, no. But then... You weren't surprised. I was because I didn't pay much attention to the headlines about Richard Simmons, a true TV icon. You know, through sweat and laughter, he brought about this fitness wave that swept across North America and who knows the world thanks to VHS tapes and his TV show. But he was 76 years old. He as you know, when he would come to one of the radio stations to do an interview, would wear those little shorts and the tank top. Yep. And I remember coming out for my interview with him, and he was up on the top of a couch <laughs> in the lobby of the radio station yep. kissing my picture so that he was doing that when I came out to meet him. It was like he just wanted to make a good impression. He was such a sweet man. But for the past few years, there were rumors that he was being held against his will by a caregiver. And he had to come out against us. Like he went into almost seclusion for many, many years and would never respond to anybody. And, and so that's how this 
things sort of fueled. And finally, he made some phone calls and said, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm okay. Hmm. But then Polly Shore, yeah. that quintessential D-lister from the 80s, was making a biopic of him against Richard's will. Richard Ooh. asked him not to do it, and he was going to do it anyway. So I imagine that's going to be sped up and, and will come out much more quickly than it was going to. Or that he would have wanted. Yeah. Yes, those little red and white satin striped shorts. <laughs> I, too, remember when he came into the radio station. Yeah. It must have been the same day. And I remember it because it was so bizarre. We had Kim Campbell and Richard Simmons in the studio, not at the same time, but back to back. And it was just this <laughs> flurry of activity. He was such a sweet man and he would was. cry at a stop yeah. sign. Oh, yeah. my. And then another icon of our adulthood, but of a lot of kids' youth, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Have good sex. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. As someone described a voice that rolled in together Henry Kissinger and a canary. <laughs> Out of this diminutive, like, four foot six or seven body came this woman who truly was a doctor. She had more degrees than a thermometer. She was a Holocaust orphan and had been whisked off to Switzerland to go to school. And she only did a few years of school. Mostly she was a servant for the families there and then made her way to the United States. Her third husband was Westheimer. He was 5'6", so it was kind of a match made in heaven for them. And she just changed everything with a little 5- or 10-minute radio show at midnight on a New York radio station. Yeah. That's how it grew. It was incredible to see this little woman who didn't... Now, let's be honest. When you think sex symbol, you don't think Dr. Mm -hmm. Ruth. All these leggy, beautiful sex symbols would never utter a word about it. And she was so, I don't know, clinical. She made it okay. It was like, hey, you know, everybody have some fun. You've got to have good sex. Yeah, it was the package. It's like Canada's Sue Johansson, the registered nurse who had a radio show. And then it was on W, Sex with Sue Johansson. And I had had the opportunity to have her on my show. And she was so open, so blatant about insert A into tab B right. or not, or yeah. here's some things you can wear or do. It was also clinical. And because the two of them looked more like your mom's bridge group, <laughs> you weren't busy focusing on the lip gloss. You were listening to what was coming yeah. out of their mouths. And so it was information some people didn't like Dr. Ruth. There was a cardinal who was up in arms about her because he was saying, she's saying if it feels good, do it. And this was in a time of opening of sexuality and, and the Victorian mores that had still, and still do to some extent, cover everything. You said it was a cardinal? It well, was. For the birds. I know. For the birds. Right? Never did get a chance to get her take. I mean, she was 96. I don't know how the last few years of her life were, but a study came out this week about vibrators for women. Mm -hmm. I can hear you blushing. <laughs> and it's actually a very medical study that showed that women who have perimenopause, which we know could be a long range starting anywhere from like 30, mm -hmm. right through menopause can physically and mentally benefit from the use of a vibrator. It's a science, Erin. I'm not kidding. Okay. And it would be nice to know what Dr. Ruth thought of that because they found it really did help their mental health as much as cognitive behavior therapy does or medication alleviates pain later during regular sex yeah. and yeah. all sorts of things. It helped with sleep. It helped with overall well-being. And they looked at women between 19 and 80 years old and Across the board, uh, it helps. So that was a very Dr. Ruth study that Dr. Ruth had nothing to do with. But hey, if it buzzes, give it a shot. Well, I don't know. I, yeah. Uh, there. Are... <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to. Okay, okay, two things. First, I remember getting a vibrator. <laughs> 
delivered to the radio station. It was this little one about the size. It was actually called the Lifesaver, and it was in a, a plastic <laughs> package with a little snap on it, all the colors of a package of Lifesavers. And yeah, lo and behold, there was inside a little buzz light year, I don't know, to intimacy, intimacy and beyond. And uh, okay, so <laughs> that was because of the sex show, I think, that was on in Toronto. Uh, are we going to have right. to flag this episode as being not for kids? Because I don't think so. We're not talking about anything. We're talking about uh, toys, grown-up toys. So I got one from a sex show as well, Erin, and it? it was glass. Glass? And it was massive. It was made of glass, and it was huge. It. I didn't know what to do with it. I <laughs> Like, what, what do I do? Give it to Goodwill? Like, <laughs> it's just glass. Anyway, um, yeah, I have no idea, and I am not going to Google that. But it sounds like a Blondie song. Oh no, that was Hearts of Glass. Never mind. <laughs> I'm wow. So this is our experience, or I will not speak for you. I will say initial experience. But I'm telling you, sister, times are changing. My own sister lives in Mexico, and when we were touring her little town, she's showing this store on the corner, and all they have is vibrators. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, we won't be going in there, thanks. <laughs> I guess, again, it's my own Puritan BS. It's like, now you're saying there's science. And it does remind me of the Grace and Frankie episode of that whole storyline of their, what was it called? What was their vibrator line? Vibrant. Vibrant. V-Y-B-R-A-N-T, vibrant. For women yes. with, or for people with uh, arthritis. But anyway, if this makes you uncomfortable... We apologize. It's it's science. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> you be frankly then. That's right. That's right. Are we going to be talking about this on our Facebook Live? Like, are you going to be bringing show and tell, Lisa? <laughs> that would be something. Absolutely not. There's fun and then there's private. That's not happening. Okay. So what will be happening? It's August 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And I see you've been doing great social media work, getting out the word about the necklaces that folks can win. Maybe if it was a vibrator, but that'd be too much money. We don't have that kind of a budget. <laughs> Envy Pillow should sell something like that. Anyway, okay, okay, okay. Get back in line, Aaron. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so tell me the details and how people get these because we have been getting emails about them. Yes, we have. So all you do is get a friend to like our Facebook page, email your name and your friend's name, male, female, otherwise, doesn't matter. Yeah. Email those names to gracefullyfrankly at gmail.com. End of contest is July 31st. Oh, that's important. July 31st. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll draw 10 names for two pendants and you give one to your friend. And that's all there is to it. Now, during the Facebook Live is when we'll announce the names of the people who win. But we're going to do a lot more during the Facebook Live. What? I don't know. But we'll do a lot more than the draws. Hey, yeah. And that's another thing. If you've got ideas of what you want us to talk about, please do join us on our Gracefully and Frankly Facebook page and say, hey, guys, you need to talk about this. You haven't talked about this yet. Or you mentioned it once and then just kind of let it go. Whatever. Whatever. We're not counselors. Yep. We're not psychologists. We're just girls. We're just friends. We're just you. And hopefully we're telling your stories in our words. And we would love to continue to do that on our Facebook Live. And oh, oh this time, if your luggage arrives, and there's no reason it won't, you're going to wear your caftan, your much ballyhoo <laughs> caftan. In fact, I'm only bringing carry-on, so it will be with me. That's not going to be a problem. Yes, I'm going to wear my caftan. Okay. Will you wear one? I... I might wear a dress. I don't think I have a caftan. Okay. Here's an idea. Wear the caftan on the plane. What would be more comfortable, Lisa? <laughs> then I have to wash it. Nah. We've got laundry facilities. <laughs> okay. I'll think about it. Yeah. We'll have new laundry facilities, as a matter of fact. Moved into the condo. Found out the dishwasher doesn't clean the dishes. It's like in the name you had one job. Oh, no. Yeah, all my salad bowls are coming out with more greenery on them than when they went in. Oh, and the no. washer and dryer are just tiny, tiny, tiny. They're almost like their dollhouse. So, 
Yeah, we've bought some new appliances, and this is all fun when you're waiting for your other house to sell. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I'm not at the point where I'm going to sell organs or anything. <laughs> Let me ask you, on your little venture to the cottage this week or the cabin, are you taking the dogs? I wish I could. But oh. in a true sign of how much Rob really does want me to go away on my own, he said, you can leave the dogs here. He said, I don't mind. I'll take them out three times a day Aww. because I did want to. I'm just going to get in the mini, pack a suitcase, pack my bag of groceries and go over the hour and a half ride to Maine Island and then toot, 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 get to the resort. And I was going to take the dogs, but their pet-friendly cabins are all gone. Oh, Lisa, I waited till the last minute, which is my favorite thing to do. Yeah. And because I booked within 48 hours, I got 30% off. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, that was great because yeah. I was really doing a waiting game there going, okay, come on, come on, come on. I want this cabin. So I shall talk to you next week, hopefully with news of adventures, not too, too, too big ones. Yes, little adventures only. Nothing shaking rattling and or rolling. You stay cool there. I understand the humidity's just been punishing. Humidity and the rain. The third once in a century rainfall. Flooding basements and the highways and the infrastructure in Toronto are just not prepared for it. Crazy. We are grateful for you for entering our GNF contest. Again, all the details are at our Gracefully and Frankly Facebook page. You can find them there. And once again, if you have some ideas for our Facebook Live on August the 8th, it's your show too. We appreciate you and we would love your comments and suggestions. Why not? For sure. So thanks to Envy Pillow. I'll be taking mine along with me. Never leave home without mm-hmm. it. And to Sierra Sill, keeping Robbie moving while he's renovating while I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know when to travel. Timing is everything. Catch you next week. Yep.